disconnect the inlet connection which is on top of the probe. Then we need to slide open the door and behind here there's a large fissure connector and a small fissure connector for the capillary voltage. Pull the collar at the rear so we can remove it and the same for the larger one which is a tight fit. Let the cables hang downwards. Open the source enclosure door using the lever. Hold with both hands. Be careful it might be hot at least here on the bottom side. We can remove by lifting up and then pulling towards you. Ensure that the source block has cooled down as it can be very hot before we can remove the source. For safety, please take out the mains power lead. We can now open to show the heater and remove the source block. If the heater plate is tight, then use your Allen key to remove. This here presses between the heater element and the front plate. It always is loose, but originally was stuck to the element. Next, loosen all the screws. There are four captive screws in total around the block. Remove the block. You can see that the O-rings are sticking for a while. You can see here it's dirty and we need to clean it. Remove the isolation valve held in by an O-ring. Then we can clean the inside. Remove the red Teflon O-ring, the heater cover O-ring and the heater. The heater we can take out by removing just one screw and then hold it upside down. The wires can break so be careful not to bend. Here we use tweezers to be careful. In order to be able to remove the red o-ring we can remove the two cone fixings. This also makes them easier to clean. Now with a dental tool or a very small screwdriver we should be able to lift out the o-ring. Also here there's a small cutout to help remove the heater plate o-ring. Be careful so that you can reuse it. To clean it use formic acid and water. Remove most of the dirt you can see, especially inside the block, behind where the cone sits. Make sure you use a wooden cotton swab, because the formic acid will dissolve plastic ones. Inside the apple-shaped hole has to be critically clean. Take care that you don't leave any cotton fibres in here because one fibre is enough to result in source charging. Also clean the inside here, behind where the cone fits. Now clean the isolation valve with the same water and acid solution. Use water to rinse off all the formic acid from all of the source components. The final step is to sonicate in methanol. Take out the glass beaker. Dry quickly using nitrogen to prevent methanol spots from forming. After the methanol and blow drying, we can reinsert the valve into the source block. Remember this is open and this is closed. Push firmly in. The heater does not require cleaning. Refit the locating screw. Check if these two screws are still okay. Don't over tighten these. Refit the O-ring for the heater plate. Place flat and sandwich this between the heater element and the front plate. Take care not to put it near the terminals because it can create a short. Hold down the plate and tighten the screws. Next we will put back the Teflon O-ring and the cone fixing mounts. Be sure to properly press in the O-ring. If damaged it should be replaced. For the fixings for the cone there needs to be some flexibility. We have several washers here and if you look carefully we put the washer each 180 degrees on top of each other. This will act like a spring.
When fitted under the screw, it will mean it will be tightened with a spring-like compression and this should be able to allow the cone to be fitted securely. Now I can put in the screw and screw it down on the source block. You will see a locating pin along with the hole for the screw. Here's the pin and the screw hole. These should be no more than hand tight. Any more then the spring has no function. Now it's fully reassembled, we can put it back on the instrument. Align all the holes. These pins are for alignment. Here, these are electrical feed-throughs for the heater and for the temperature sensor and cone voltage, there's a temperature sensor. Hold the source block in place to ensure that the O-rings stay in place and tighten the four captive screws. Tighten them in sequence to ensure an even fit, just over hand tight. You can see the isolation valve here is closed. This closes off the vacuum so that you can remove the cone after cleaning without venting the system. In this position you can see it's fully open. Do not do this when the system is under vacuum because your turbo pumps will be heavily stressed and may become damaged. Line up the hinges and push down. Then close the enclosure door. Line up the red dots on the larger fissure cable and reconnect. Slide the door across. Reconnect the smaller fissure cable and finally reconnect the inlet connection to the probe.